YouTube, we are in the top eight grand finale and the top deck list of this tournament. Starting this off with Dinos vs. Labyrinth by watching as long as you can, liking, commenting, subscribing for the algorithm that greatly supports me, allowing us to keep on posting these great videos for you. With that said, Hajime. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. Hajime, top eight. Let's do it. Fossil digging our baby source in our hand. We have no hand traps whatsoever to stop a full wombo combo. What is the way the play uninterrupted with dinosaurs? Baby and Scrap Raptor making a Naturia Barkeon against Labyrinth. What the trap card activated? Banish two from the grave to negate. Not once per turn, not hard once per turn, not once per chain. Negate, negate, negate. We got 10 cards in the graveyard. That's five traps negated. Okay. Dugaris. Uh, <laughs> as soon as he saw the Barkeon, he's out. Ain't no way. Set four pass. That is a great disrupting way to stop dinos from popping off. Now with miscellaneous source, we'll make our dinosaurs unaffected from activated effects. So how is that going to affect the back row here? Let's analyze this. During this main phase, dinosaurs you control, so the ones in the hand in the graveyard are affected still. They're unaffected from activated effects. We could not use Solemn Judgment because it cannot negate the effect of a monster, but Solemn Judgment can still negate a summon of a dinosaur, even under miscellaneous source, making you unaffected from activate effects because the monster's not on the field yet. All right. And uh, this is kind of weird. Daruma can't flip monsters face down because they're unaffected, but then your opponent has to send all cards unaffected to the graveyard. All the dinos. This complete, this hard counters miscellaneous source. You hard countered me with Barkeon, and it's now time to repay the favor. Ovi Raptor sending for the decks of the graveyard. Okay, because we are, okay, we're not adding, sure. We are using the ground Xeno, grabbing, and then the Meteoris. So what happened here is by adding the Meteoris, we popped the Giant Rex, which triggers the Meteoris to summon from the hand. And now the unaffected, both dinos before they summon a Baron to floor, are going to be flipped face down, but they can't. So you have to send them to the graveyard, right? Huh? They must send all face-up monsters they control to the grave. This is a bug. You need to flip something. <gasps> then, then, if you, if you flipped one card face down, they would go to the grave. Because you flipped nothing, you don't then send the field to the grave. Wow. There has to be some, even your own monster, if it were flipped face down, it would have sent them to the grave. Beautiful. Wow. That's something. <laughs> That's something. Barkeon wins again. Scrap Raptor popping the baby source. Baby source activating to summon a miscellaneous. Baron to floor, probably gonna get Psalm Judgmented here. But we're then going to 4,000 life points. Uh oh, oh, did not. I, I think we gave up. <laughs> Mode Hearts like, I'm done. I'm playing Pal World. This is trash. I'm gonna disenchant my entire deck. Overroot. Baron to floor. Negate. Hey, we got Nibiru at least. And dinosaurs are unaffected, but Scrap Wyvern and Baron to floor are warriors. Let's go. Uh, warrior and machine, that is. Oh, uh, dragon, dragon, dragon and warrior. Looks like a machine, but it's not. Now we do have big welcome, big welcome. The kids summon lovely, return back Nibiru, then pop a card in the field. It's no longer the main phase, so the miscellaneous would be affected if we cared. Get triggering, get popping. We could recycle Daruma if we want, that's cool. All right. Dimensional barrier against dinos. What do we call? Exceed? It's synchro or exceed? What do we lock them out of? I really don't know. Let's see what happens. 
Miscellaneous source banishing four cards to summon a misc from the deck, triggering the giant rex to summon itself onto the field. We're not declaring exceed right now, so an exceed summon's about to happen, but we could then negate the exceed monster while it's face up on the field. Or can we? Lagia is solemn judgment. It can't negate a monster effect, but it can negate a spell, trap, or summon, thus negating the dimensional barrier. So what do we do? We have more than dimensional barrier. We have big welcome, which could trigger the lovely to pop a card in the field, which cannot be negated by the Lagia. But if Lagia negates the big welcome, then uh, we have dimensional barrier that could negate the Lagia from negating. Adding the Frostosaurus to then pop a Petite from the hand. Petite being triggered as we now dimensional barrier to Cleric Seize Monsters. And Lagia is like, okay, I'll just synchro. We're going to synchro instead. Anyway. Nibiru, which Lagia can't negate Nibiru anyway. Pankratops is going to be popping the lovely. And now the big welcome cannot be used because there's a secret effect of the lovely that states that if you do not control a fiend type monster, that trap cannot be activated. And we don't. So it, it, it you would think a cool play would be Nibiru tribute lovely, reborn lovely with big welcome, return back Nibiru, pop a card. That's a TCG play, but not in Master Duel. All right, well, we didn't even have to do it. We didn't even, not forced. They weren't doing anything crazy. All right, uh, it's still locked out. <laughs> it's not, it still is illegal. It still can't be used. So it's not even that turn. Like, what the heck? I can't believe how it's just locked out. Arcosaur popping to grab a pill, miscellaneous, banishing a ton of cards in the graveyard to summon an OV Raptor. We do have the Dogmatica Punishment, which could pop two cards on the field here. Giant Rex reborning after being banished, as we now grab an Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. OV Raptor popping the Arcosaur to reborn a Pancratops to pop a card in the field, forcing out the activation of the Divine Punishment. And we're not under an active miscellaneous source. So as I said, pop two cards in the field, take out the OV Raptor, and Tis take out the other. But we could just banish to summon an Ultimate Conductor Tyranno from our hand. Ultimate Conductor Tyranno big enough to wipe out the Nibiru. Big Welcome is still dead. We need a Fiend. It doesn't have to be a Labyrinth. A Fiend-type monster. We have another Big Welcome. Okay. With no body on the field, the big welcome is not disruption. We need to summon Lovely, then return another monster we control to trigger Lovely to pop a card. This is not good. Fossil Dig, digging for our baby Saurus here as the Scrap Chimera is normal summoned as we then follow up into a double evolution pill to summon a second copy of our ultimate conductor Tyranno from the deck, triggering the giant Rex to summon itself onto the field to then exceed into a Dugaris. Dugaris could draw two. Reborn from the grave or double the attack of a monster. What are we doing? We are going to reborn from the graveyard our Pancratops. Pancratops is here, forcing out the activation of the big welcome labyrinth, which is going to have to summon a lady, return lady, then special lady. Lady cannot be destroyed by card effects, but it could be destroyed by battle and it can be sent to the graveyard through the effect of Ultimate Conductor Tyranno for 1,000 damage. Lady's gonna be blocking the Dugaris, sent to the graveyard for 1,000, as we said. So, you know, we, we stopped a decent amount of damage here. Maxi's not a fiend. It's a freaking insect. Normal Maxi, activate big welcome. You can't freaking do it. <laughs> we tried! I, Modar knows, Modar knows. Self-inflicted lethal damage. Dinosaurs advancing to the top four. 2-0 victory. Stealing game one with a Barkeon. And an interesting ruling with Daruma coming up for game two. Modar, I'm not going to fault you for it. I'll be honest. I thought the Daruma was going to pop off, but it has to flip at least one card face down to then send the rest of the unaffected dinos to the grave. That was crazy. All right, Therizia, which is going to be setting up a Dynamorphia Sonic, which is a very good card to be using against Labyrinth. Let's look at the back row here. We have Negate a Spell or Trap. We have Set any normal trap from the deck and it's activatable that turn. We have Dynamorphia Intact, Negate a Monster Effect, so we could negate the Lady. And we have Frenzy, which will set up the Rex turn, which was a nice big boss monster, Floodgate. 
Dynamorphia Frenzy at the end of the main phase. You were willing... Okay, you were just going to battle then uh, main phase two. So uh, really smart. Knowing that we're playing against Dynamorphia because, of course, they summoned Therizia turn one. You could fake end your turn or fake enter the battle phase. You don't actually say battle phase or end phase. You say end of main phase. And then they want to use their frenzy because it's their last opportunity, or at least they think so. Kentragina. Oh. <laughs> Didn't even have time to activate the Kentragina. Lava Golem right away. Now the Dynamorphia intact is no good. It doesn't work. The Dynamorphia Sonic can't negate. It's no good. We do not control a Dynamorphia card nor monster. Trap trick. We're going to be chain summoning Lady onto the field here, which the intact was supposed to be negating if we controlled a Dynamorphia card. Banishing alert. Okay, so alert can pay half your life points to reborn our Dynamorphias. But then we can get Lava Golem again. Again? Double Lava Golem? Chain Lady to the alert to set a trap from the deck. Haas is really messing with Dynamorphia here. This is wild. Will Kentragena summon a Rex turn before being tributed by Lava Golem? Well, yes. <laughs> we're gonna copy Reborn. Wait, we're not going into Rex turn? We're playing around a second Lava Golem in a way. This is interesting. In case you have another Lava Golem, I'm setting up another Dynamorphia alert. Okay. Wow. Uh, Anderson, that was quite impressive, I think so. Ensuring that there was no way to get Lava Golem again, making the Dynamorphia Sonic unplayable and the Intact unactivatable. We could use the Sonic to negate the Big Welcome, but then Solemn Judgment will negate the negate. Otherwise, the Sonic can negate the Solemn Judgment. Let's see what we do. Big Welcome, Chain Maxi, so we're not negating. Okay. Maybe fishing out a Solemn Strike here, which the Sonic could negate. We want Lady to be activated so we could use Intact on it. Eradicator Epidemic Virus is going to attempt to be negated by the Sonic as the Solemn Judgment will negate the negate as we now look at the field for traps, look at the hand for traps, and for three turns, all newly drawn cards that are traps will be destroyed. Goodbye to the entire back row. Holy moly. Negate. Wipe out the field. Traps are now legal. And goes a match. Okay, you're locked in a Dark Monsters only, which... You're a dark deck, right? The Rex turns dark? Yeah, it's all dark anyway. Dark, the Dark Gloomer is going to steal your Dark Monster from the graveyard. Reborning the Lady. Let's go. Wait. Lava Golma's game? No, didn't we have the, the thing, the intact in the graveyard that could protect you from damage? What, what happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? Okay, uh, yeah, I guess the Eradicator put the intact in the grave. But uh, it, wasn't, it looks like there's another intact in the graveyard already. Okay, okay so ch chat, chill. If, uh, oh, no, 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 the damage. It's another card, it's another card. It's the alert, alert. If your, oh, wait, your opponent has to activate a card or effect while you're at 2,000 or life points or lower. Wait, Lava Golem can't be stopped. Lava Golem was actually game. Don't, don't say bad words to a player. You could criticize the plays, not the player. The, yeah, the... Because Dynamorphia gets their life points low, all of the traps have inherently built into them some way to stop the opponent from cheesing a win, from cheesing out effect damage or a little bit of battle damage. They all have a way to stop it, but it's only if the opponent activates a card do you get to chain your trap to take no effect damage, but you are the one that controls Lava Golem, thus Lava Golem is self-inflicted lethal damage that you can't stop. Right? Right? Did he have a way to stop it? I don't think he had a way to stop it. Could use intact on the own Lava Golem? When a monster effects act? No. I mean, we had intact to stop Lava Golem. Right? Right? Intact was set. Intact would have negated Lava Golem. What do you mean you can't? When a monster is activated, your own monster, while you control a Dynamorphia, negate the Lava Golem. Right? You lost a lot of Lava Golems? Yeah, but you didn't have intact in the back row. He eradicated? Yeah, but can't you chain to the Eradicator to make it so you take no effect damage for the rest of the turn? Or the next time you would take effect damage? Let me read that real quick. The alert. 
Your, when your opponent activates a card effect, you banish this card, you take no effect damage from your opponent's card effects this turn. Wait, it's only your opponent. Oh my gosh. Wait, how did, what happened to Lava Golem again? Uh, my brain's getting fried. What the heck just happened? Oh, the Gozen killed it. And there was no way to stop it except, so we correctly eradicated the intact, which would have negated the Lava Golem. And then we got rid of Lava Golem before it activated to burn for game. In the draw phase. Yeah, uh, you know, things happened. A lot of stuff happened in the draw phase. That is wild. Wow. That is something. Holy moly. Uh, but now we know. Now we know. All right. Uh, that was crazy. Double Lava Golem. It looks like just one was game, right? Uh, we, he was at 500 life. What was his life points at the start of the duel? Let, let, let's just, geez, a lot of stuff to consider here. I can't rewind the gameplay to see what the life points was at. The start of the turn, it was just one Lava Golem was game. Just one. Just one. Yeah, it was just one was game, and the traps only stop in opponent's effect damage. Okay, well, let's see if we could win anyway. Oh my gosh, our Gozen killed us. Our Gozen slaughtered us. The Eradicator taking out a trap. And just like that, lethal damage. Haas all as well, my friend. I mean, you played that so damn well. I would say that that was a misclick. That wasn't even a misplay. It was just like the hand slipped and you flipped it up. That's what that, yup, that's what happened. All right, let's hop into game number two. Okay, let's see how that works. <laughs> Set five pass. Let's go, surely. Set three versus set five. I think set five is a little bit better than set three. We are going to be matching the max uh, max C to the welcome labyrinth, summoning a labyrinth from the deck here. Ariana to add a card from the deck. Come to us, lady, which could be special summoned onto the field right here, but we're going to wait. All right. Uh, you know, I think lady being summoned during their end phase would have been good. We have dimensional barrier disallowing fusion monsters from being special summoned. Now, do we have anything to stop that? We don't. No fusion monster summoning for you. 1600 to the face. We're waiting with the lady. Maxi onto the lady. You know, we got maxied at the uh, during the previous turn, so summoning lady under maxi would not have been good. So I'm uh, sorry, I'm distracted by the dogs being nuts and that lava golem craziness. All right, so we're back. We're normal. Breathe. Let's go. If a normal trap's activated from either player, we could chain the lady to that normal trap to set a trap from our deck. We're targeting the wave bridge, the second one that is, to reborn, uh, for, to set from the graveyard. Wait, wait, wait. It's send then set. Okay. Target a card and a card in the graveyard. Send the card and if you do set the other, so it, it's gonna have room to do it. Set, set, even though there's five set. Okay. Now. We have Therizia activating to set up a Dinomorphia domain to set up our fusion summoning again. Welcome Labyrinth will be summoning from the deck our lovely Labyrinth. If a monster leaves the field through a trap effect, which is happening right now through the Dogmatica Punishment, it's going to allow our lovely to pop the Dinomorphia domain. But instead of saving intact for the lovely, which we can't really save it for that because we're not gonna have a Dynamorphia card, we're gonna use the intact to negate the lady from setting a trap from the deck. So, you know, ideally you would use intact on the lovely, taking out the domain, but we're not gonna have that option. Okay. Punishment, Intis, also popping. Lovely popping. I mean, goodbye to both of your back row in the end phase. And <laughs> let's get out of here. Goodbye to everything. Open field next turn game. And the intact does not destroy the lady because lady cannot be destroyed. Protected from destruction as long as we have a set card. Very well done. Lord Heavenly Prison protecting our back row from being destroyed. Only the set cards that are is. Fossil Dig digging for our Therizia here. The Rise are going to be setting up. Nothing as Imperm negates the set as we would want to be setting up a Frenzy or an Intact. Two cards we already have in our hand, so we're fine. Not a big deal. Setting up the Sonic would still be good, though. Sonic being able to negate a spell or trap would be ideal in this scenario. Lord of Heavenly Prism being met with a Maxi as it summons, then sets a card from the deck that will be banished during the end of the next turn, so we got to use it, which will be the big welcome. 
Set three versus set four. Eradicator in the end phase. Oh my gosh. Limited to one. We didn't even have to set it with the freaking lady, mate. Wipe out every... I mean, that's auto lose. <laughs> reveal, reveal, reveal. Goodbye to everything. Look at the hand. Newly drawn traps for the next three turns are uh, going to be destroyed. Big welcome going to get ashed, and we have no way to stop it, so maybe we can get beat down by the Therizia. We have a dead skill drain, dead Waybridge, dead Lava Golem, triple dead card here. Newly drawn card is a trap. It does get destroyed right away. But let's start beating them down. Therizia, beat down. Could we have done... What if we normal max C, make a dark, dark steel heavenly dragon, right? But I, I mean, we don't know what their back row is. They would flip up skill drain on the dark activation. Uh oh, now we have a welcome labyrinth. Get ready, get ready. <laughs> two traps drawn, two traps destroyed. Battle we go again, not going to even activate the Welcome Labyrinth to block the attack here. As Max C, I mean, we're still under Eradicator. We draw a trap with Max C, it gets destroyed. Come forth. From the deck only, not Graveyard nor Hand. Lovely is here. Hey, it's an Ash that could have been used for the Welcome Labyrinth. Eradicator is now done. And we have an Ash that was late to the party. Dead Golem, dead Golem, but the Lovely is devastating. Being able to recycle any trap in the graveyard back onto the field, recycling the Eradicator, that is absolutely devastating. With the big Welcome in the graveyard plus Lovely Labyrinth, we could spin any card in the field back to the hand. It's over. It's over, right? We're gonna get rid of our Lovely right here? We'll wait till the end phase. <laughs> Just let's see if they, they even draw a trap. That's a nice trap you have there, and it's gone. But the problem with this is we don't, uh, ha we're back to being bricked. So we're playing off the top of our deck. And a pretty good top deck. So we're back in business. <laughs> Another s trap gone. <laughs> it's just like two more turns of this? No thank you. Doesn't even know what the back row is. D wasn't gonna lose next turn. Just leaves the duel out of frustration. I'm out. Aluber grabbing our branded fusion into a Droll Mockbird, which we said that Droll is not that good against Branded. And you'll see soon. Goodbye to Nibiru, as we can now safely summon five times or more. Branded fusion going for the standard Albion Send Lubellion play, which gets stopped by a DD Crow or Bistial. Surprisingly, we never really see the Bistial or DD Crow to stop this. Banishing to come forth is our Lubellion. Lubellion on summon, discard a card, get fusion summoning as we fuse with the banished Albaz and Lubellion to make our Mirror Jade. Tributing the Albion to summon our Lubellion, setting up a branded Lost. Now, with fusion duplication, we do not have to set a branded Banishment, we could set a Retribution instead. So we can negate an effect to special summon, we could banish a monster on the field non-targeting, we can copy the effect of branded fusion, we could trigger the branded Lost to give us a Mercurier, and yeah, let's go. Looking quite nuts. We're gonna do so right away in the draw phase, which plays into the impermanence, which Albion actually can't be in perms because it's untargetable. Triggering the branded loss, grabbing our monster negates. We have the Albion with the ability to special summon an Albaz on our field plus a monster on their field, then fuse with it. Imperm onto the Mirror Jade, sure. Your Jeep will not be able to banish now. It's still activating because it getting Rin Brum into the graveyard is still disruption as it could reborn the Albaz from the grave to then fuse with the field. Let's go, let's go. Grabbing the, with Lady Debug, we are gonna be grabbing a Mirror. Salman Grape Mirror. Mirror is activating here just to get negated. Because it was added, it's activating to special summon itself onto the field. Now, does Gazelle work here? A Salman Great Monster is sent to the graveyard from the hand or field. It does not matter. Even from the deck, it will be triggered. It will summon. It will get retributioned. Retribution on the Gazelle, I think, is something. Wait. We, we negate. We don't destroy. We didn't destroy since it wasn't sent from the hands of the graveyard. Gazelle does not trigger. All right. But Bale Search Field Spell, Bale over Bale, trigger the Gazelle. 
then retribution will come into play. Right? Yep, I think so. Bro, you could just mirror again? Oh no, it's doing the other effect. You could discard one other card to special summon this card. And then it had the effect of added, it could special summon. I didn't know it did, had two ways of special summon. Okay, cool. Link off into our second copy of Balinx. Now we are triggering the Gazelle as we now use Retribution to negate and destroy that Gazelle. Returning back the negated Mirror Jade. Gazelle's not going to be sending a Salmon Great card from the deck to the graveyard, which is going to be giving us so much more plays. It could send Extenders. It could set up Negates. Shall me surrendering, and rightfully so. Let's see what Salman Great could do going first. Lady Debug, we're not going to be having to deal with any hand traps whatsoever here. Public Disruptions, not counting the Nibiru or the Ash, we have Negate Anything. And if you were to summon a monster, we could destroy it with the Promethean Princess. So double disruption, surely we could play right through it. You know, you know the Ash too. Branded opening, you do not want to Ash that. Discard Retribution, summon the Alber. Again, you don't want to Ash this. Adding a Branded Fusion. You do not want to negate this with the Roar because it will be added back to the hand through the Retribution, thus making it activatable again. You have to Ash it. Albion sending from the deck to the graveyard of Branded Lost. Branded in High Spirits is going to be chained to add from our deck an Albaz monster. We're going to get rid of the Albion, just putting it in the graveyard. It can still activate there, adding an Albaz from the deck to the hand. Retribution recycling the Branded Lost, which will protect the fusion from being negated by a Salman Great Roar. It cannot be negated. The activation, but the effect can still be negated by Ash. And it lost. This also can't be negated by the roar. Let's go. That's something. And the Promethean Princess, let's read this. If a monster is special summoned, not normal, hot damn, cannot negate the Albaz because of Branded Lost. Are we gonna try? Oh God, we tried. We tried. We tried. Albaz fusing <laughs> with the Sunlight Wolf making our Mirror Jade. Now, this is where you Promethean Princess. You can't and you can't. You double can't. This is where you Gazelle, right? You actually can't. You can't, you can't do anything. You can't Gazelle. You can't Promethean Princess. Why? Because of Lost. And he doesn't control a fire monster. Lost says you cannot activate in response to a fusion summon, which is when you would Promethean Princess if you had a fire monster which is when you would gazelle because your uh, monster that is a Salamangrate was sent to the graveyard. So uh, yeah, uh, completely clapped up. That branded lost was absolute <laughs> decimation. Even if we did not use Salamangrate Roar, when could we use it? We can't use it unless we have a Salamangrate Link on the field, which the Albaz was gonna deal with. So the, the Roar, it's not even really a misplay, it's just surrendering. Knowingly surrendering, knowing that you're screwed. But we have Ash. Ash keeps Branded in check, right? You, you just Ash the fusion and you you win, you're fine. Obviously not happening. As the Mercurial negates the Ash, as we have an Albaz fusion on the field. Come forth Albion, which can attack even after activating the fuse, which the Lubellion fusion cannot. Using the graveyard, we have how much damage on the field here? Exactly 8,000. Very nice. Cartesia could even add to this. Nibiru! Oh, we have no way to stop Nibiru. We actually played right into the Nibiru. We could activate the Mirror Jade, then negate the Mirror Jade to return the Alibur back to the hand, but by setting up an Albas Fusion in the graveyard, that's going to do something. Titan Clan could summon a Quem from the deck during the end phase. We did not Rinbrum. Uh-oh. Uh, okay, that was a misplay, a little one. That's fine. We are going to Mirror Jade wipe out the Nibiru during the end phase, special summon a Cartesia, then end our turn. Quem during the end phase, send from the deck to the grave a Branded Sword, which could add back the Banished Mercoria to our hand. Banishment can reborn from the grave, then fuse with either field, then trigger the Quem to reborn the Mirror Jade to the non-target monster banish. Even when you stop Branded, 
You didn't stop Brandon. This doesn't look stopped. You stopped lethal, but you're still gonna lose. Cartesia activating the fuse, moving a card from the extra deck, triggering the Quem to reborn the Mirror Jade. Yep. And that non-target monster banish. And we have the Branded Law searching our deck, not for disruption. We already got the Mercourier. It's just gonna be for next turn though. If you don't surrender. Let's go, let's go. Mirror Jade is here, sending a Garuda. Let's draw another card, why not? And do we have a branded opening to stop the Promethean from destroying the Mirror Jade? Let's see. We do, oh, we do, of course. Of course we have an out to everything that they could possibly do. Draw and Lockbird on our own turn to try to stop Branded from adding. We're thinking our Mirror Jade is gonna die probably, so we're just activating it before it dies, but it's not gonna die if we choose for it to not die. Non-target banish the Gazelle, Promethean Princess would still summon here. We did not protect it. I, I guess we just wanted it to die. Okay, hmm, yeah, sure. Uh, because we could just summon another Mirror Jade. Why protect a Mirror Jade that already activated when we could summon a second one that has not activated yet? And of course, it's not a hard once per turn activation. We could activate it again. So not only are we going to fuse with the Promethean Princess, we're going to hope that the opponent summons something else that we could also banish with our new Mirror Jade. Yep. Mirror Jade number two and fully activatable to non-target monster banish. The Foxy is trying to pop the Branded Loss, which will not really be accomplishing much. Even then, we're still going to Mercurial Negate. Is this a perfect example of just power creep? Just like, are they even playing the same game here? I, I don't understand this. What is this? Sorry, Shelmy, it's not your fault. New Cell Magrits port's coming, and I assure you it's probably still not gonna be enough. Double big welcome. Only one could be activated. We do have Maxi Lady and the Nibiru both activatable here. Searching for our Wakashi. We didn't get drolled. Are we going to respect the Gamma? Yes, we are. We're going to Maxi on the summon and not in response to the activation to play around the Gamma. Despite that, Ash is still going to negate. And by the time they Nibiru, they, I mean, they could play around Nibiru by summoning the Baron to floor before five summons. It would actually be the fifth summon. We're going to be using Big Welcome. Ghost Bell is going to negate the activation. So you actually did not even activate this, which means the Lady cannot be summoned because you didn't activate a trap. The activation was negated. Now, normally a card that can only be activated once can be activated again if it's negated on the activation, but Cards with multi effects generally say you can only use each effect once per turn. You used the effect, the activation was negated, thus you could not use it again. You cannot activate the other one. You're just screwed. So Bakashi, Soul Piercer, Excel Stardust, Motorbike, Baron to Floor on the fifth summon, and then Nibir is negated. Nope, we're not doing it. Okay. We're going to get Nibiru. So Piercer, grab in the Stealthy. So we're on Summon 3, we're on Summon 4, and we are on Summon 5. Now, this is scary. Some people are playing Stardust, some people aren't. I'm not. I know a lot of people that are also not. I, I know what it does. Of course, we could chain our Excel to the Nibiru to make an unaffected Baron to Floor, but you can't do it right now. You have to have a level 2 tuner on the field. So Alpha's got to take a gamble on, does he play Stardust? Well, we did see it in a previous duel if you've been watching the stream. Are we activating it? Are we activating it? Yes, we are. So the tuner's going to summon onto the field and we could still fully pendulum summon. So does Nibiru even stop the deck? Not really. So we could have Baron to Florida on our fifth summon to negate Nibiru, but do we really even need to negate Nibiru? It, we summoned the token in the wrong spot. The spot to summon the token for all of you paying attention here, if you're going to Nibiru them, the middle, the middle zone. It's going to stop the Clifford Genius from being able to add the Therion. They cannot Clifford Genius if the token is in the middle. They have to get rid of the token. So, you know, that's something. 
Special summon the scales, scales, reborn the soul piercer, scoop phase. Yeah, we scooping. The uh, Ballista is going to be adding the Piercer, grabbing another motorbike to Special Summon as a level 2 or level 4 tuner. Box into the Tunneler. Special Summon the Stealthy, Clifford Genius. As we said, the token's supposed to block the Genius from adding Ethereon. Now, would he have still lost if he summoned the token in the middle? Yeah. So, like, we, we didn't really throw. We would have just made their fields slightly less better. All right, let's go to game two. Pot of E. Get drawing. And to be fair, they do have less options to negate Droll and Maxi because they can't play Called by and Cross out. So in Konami's eyes, the deck is perfectly balanced. We got Wakashi getting ready to special summon. We do have the Droll to keep the deck in check. No called by, no cross out to stop it. Gotcha. There we go. Alpha's now good, right? Piercer can't search. We're going to summon a Saratobi to be able to pop back row. That's something. We could negate the Saratobi with the dimensional barrier if it's a problem. Activate to pop. We'll just chain the Welcome Labyrinth, which will summon a monster and pop the Saratobi. And uh, no, we didn't go for Lovely. Okay. I was thinking maybe, uh, you know, lovely pop and then pop another card in the fielder in the hand. But instead, we'll go for the lady. Equip the Peacemaker. Peacemaker, tribute to Saratobi to special summon the scale. Scale, reborn a monster from the graveyard. We still have the dimensional barrier. But what does dimensional barrier do against Baguska? It's supposed to stop the summon of Baguska, but once Baguska is on the field, neither play the effects of their monsters are negated. So, you know, it does actually stop Baguska. We'll just have to wait till next turn to negate Baguska, then swing over it. But ideally, we would have Lovely to recycle the Dimensional Barrier, right? Dimensional Barrier, negate, attack, recycle. We don't have that play because we summoned a Lady instead. But maybe we could still get access to our Lovely as we use the Dogmatica Punishment to take out the Baguska anyway and making it so we didn't even have to use the Dimensional Barrier. We're going to DD Crow the Chandelier before it gets added back to the hand. Dogmatica get punishing. That is big. Entis and the Dogmatica punishment wiping out two for one special. So surely Labyrinth should just be able to win this, right? We are going to hold on to that dimensional barrier plus our max C, which should be guaranteeing another turn here. Ooh, do not, <laughs> do not max C in response to the Wakashi. Don't do it. I know you think we're in a simplified game state. There's only three cards in their hand in response to the activation of the Wakashi. Respect the Gamma. Respect the Gamma. Okay, Gamma's been respected. Chaining Lady. Oh God, it's not, it, that's, it did not. No, oh God, we got greedy. Why, why? Uh, wait, we called Pendulum? <laughs> Pendulum, does this stop Pendulum Wakashi? Yeah, uh, okay. Neither player could special summon Pendulum, so... <laughs> Wakashi can't be special summoned, but now there's a Gamma Baron to floor play, cause, uh, yeah. Damn. <sighs> I don't know what to say. We played right into Gamma. We had a guaranteed win, but the this is the second time today where just a Gamma mid-game has completely blown the duel out. A, a near guaranteed one duel Lost by a single Gamma. And Lady can't be destroyed, right? Well, there's no set cards to protect it. It has been destroyed. Well, Wakashi can't be summoned at least. <laughs> okay. Pendulum monsters cannot be special summoned. Man, I don't know. It's just like... That's so greedy, right? Like, shouldn't we... Just wait for Wakashi to be summoned and then like negate Synchro once they make the Excel Stardust or something. I don't know, like if you really think about it, I guess it's stopping Link summons because we can't stop linking. Huh. Lady does come back though due to the Labyrinth Labyrinth at least. We got the Banky only activatable if we control the booster. So that was needed to be summoned here. Yeah, we are under Maxi though. There's a lot of special summoning. Draw three for a Baron to floor. I, I guess it's worth it, especially if we get lethal. 
Can we set up lethal damage? He stopped Pendulum Monsters from being summoned, but I could still Pendulum Summon. Pendulum Summon's okay, but Pendulum Monster's not okay. We're gonna be making the Scarecrow. Scarecrow triggering the Piercer, grabbing the Soul Horns. We're gonna discard Soul Horns, reborn the Sarah freaking Toby. Oh my gosh. Pop the Field Spell, burn for 500. That is lethal. It says 52, but it's not calculating the 2800 defense that we're about to attack with. It just like that, taking the maxi challenge, winning through a dimensional barrier. D barrier, max C, and we won that turn. Ain't no way. I don't know what's going on here. We have dinos versus the uh, labyrinth. Uh, yeah, but the, the, the dinos, the dinos is what I don't understand. The labyrinth, uh, the shiny is uh, blinding my eyes. Let's go, begin. No hand traps whatsoever, okay. Let's speed this on up. Banish six, dig deep, Lord Heavenly Prison. A lot of people have taken that out of their Labyrinth deck, but if we were able to royal the Lord early into the release of Master Duel, we gotta play it. That's probably the main reason why we're playing it. Our back row cannot be destroyed while it's face down. Solemn striking the effect of miscellaneous to make your monsters unaffected from activated effects. Wow, okay. The miscellaneous could still banish and summon from the deck. Get ready. We have trap trick to play a card from the deck. We have skill drain. Miscellaneous. <laughs> gonna do it anyway. Double misc. Anyway, Arcosaur plus the Lost World. We're flipping up skill drain here. Lost World's gonna be summoning a token onto the opposing side of the field, which can now be used with the big welcome labyrinth to return it back to our hand, thus triggering a lovely, which is negated by skill drain. Skill drain's still negated because this only negates the activated effects, not the continuous effect of skill drain. Big welcome labyrinth summoning our lovely at the start of the battle phase. The token needed to be swung into, destroyed, protected from destruction, destroy a baby from the deck, summon a dino from the deck, all in the damage step, thanks to the big welcome dealing with it. That's not gonna happen. All right. Whoa, that's the end of our turn. Trap trick during the end phase, banishing a welcome labyrinth to play a welcome labyrinth onto the field here. Triggering our Lord of Heavenly Prison, even under Skill Drain, still able to use its monster effects because it's resolving the effect in the hand to grab a big Welcome Labyrinth. Very nice. Welcome, come forth, lady. There's some cool tricks you could do here. You could activate Lovely, chain Big Welcome, return her back to the hand, then she's not negated. Uh, maybe you don't think that's cool because Skill Drain's a bit of cringe. Got open field here, Lost World, reducing the non-dinos. Oh, wait, not lethal. <laughs> it's supposed to be lethal, but the Lost World is reducing us. Triggering the welcome and the lovely, lovely is negated. Oh, Lord, it is, uh, that's a triggering a summon. Huh, that's, that's, uh, that's a play, that's game. <laughs> wow, Lord of Heavenly Prison. <laughs> Just like that, that is something, yep. Taking this into game two. Skill Drain and Lord of Heavenly Prison. Some interesting plays we have here, very well done. Let's take this into game two. Let's go, let's go. Well, 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 what do we have here? We have five back row, but we are going second. Let's go. Imperm with no miscellaneous source in sight, completely ending their turn. What the hell was that? You have to take the risk with Imperm, I'd say. You know, you know, you don't do it because of the miscellaneous. You don't ash because of miscellaneous, but you do Imperm. I think Imperm is correct, mostly. Yeah, I mean, what else are we Imperming? Were we saving for the Scrap Raptor? They're now making Baron to floor early. Grab the Misk. It's a bit ballsy, but not as much as Ash. Solemn Strike negating the ability of being unaffected from our activated effects. So we are going to be able to use the Dogmatica Punishment to not only wipe out the Oviraptor, but also take out the other Oviraptor, which would have not happened. 
We're also going to be able to use the Terrors of the Overroots, which will send a card in the field to the grave to set one from the grave. Garura is going to draw, so we're not sending Entis. Interesting. We'll just get that draw one. Arcosaur is here. Pop a card in the hand, searching for the double evolution pill. Petite summoning from the deck our Xenometeoris, which we have to do this now. So this is quite interesting. If we don't activate the Way Bridge, a Baron to Floor comes out of nowhere, their new boss monster. Now, if we chain Miscellaneous, we're unaffected from activated effects. But if we read the Way Bridge, a card I've never seen before, your opponent is sending their monsters to the grave. Not you, your opponent, not the trap, but your opponent. Thus, does this even work with cards like Lovely? I would say it doesn't. It's making the opponent send. Make him send it. <laughs> Just like that, Baron to floor play is gone, despite being unaffected from activated effects. Daruma would send the whole field to the graveyard. You know how I could tell you're late to the stream? Because you said something wrong. That's not true. Daruma would send nothing because I'm so smart and read the card and know exactly how it worked. No, it actually, it happened earlier in the tournament and it didn't work. So uh, let me know why you think it didn't work. If you don't know why it didn't work, then just watch the video where it didn't work before this video. All right, top 16 one. Let's get to it. Tears the Overroot, send the Ovi Raptor within the draw phase, playing around a miscellaneous source. Lady's gonna be special summoned. We're gonna be chaining Maxi in response to the Lady. Alrighty, and we are now waiting for any of our backer traps to be activated so that we could chain the Lady to that to then set up a trap from the deck. Set miscellaneous, I mean, ripping the misc out of the graveyard. It's not just a downside to have them summon a monster from the graveyard or a back row card. It's also graveyard control, controlling the graveyard, ripping out that miscellaneous from the grave that they very much wanted in the grave. Eradicator, look at the hand, take out the spells before activating that double evolution pill. We could activate the call by the grave. If there's a lovely in the grave, that would be ideal, but there isn't. Called by goodbye to the lady. Alrighty. Early Eradicator to get that pill out of here. Deal with the pill. Waybridge is a Duel Links card? Ain't no way. Are people actually using it? Scrap Chimera beat down, but we are now in a top deck situation. What can we do here? Panker Top's only summonable if your opponent controls more monsters than you do. Waybridge again! Ain't no way! Goodbye to the Fossil Dig. That's quite lucky, I'd say. Waybridge is going to force them into only having one monster that they can control. So as long as you just have one really good monster on the field, the Waybridge is no good. Imperm negating the Scrap Raptor from being able to summon a Scrap onto the field here. It ain't happening. Now, what do we do? Both level seven, level eight, Miscellaneous is banishing a ton of cards to come forth and summon our Ovi Raptor to then search for a Miscellaneous. Miscellaneous is gonna be normal summon here into a Lagia, which will then negate the Waybridge. Waybridge is no longer a play. Lethal damage because we didn't activate it early. Taking this into game three. Waybridge actually being a good out. Set three pass. Let's go. Big welcome, Imperm, and the Waybridge is here again. We got Lost World plus our Fossil Dig digging for our Ovi Raptor. Ovi Raptor is going to be searching for a miscellaneous likely. And we also now have the Lost World. Imperm is going to be negating the Ovi Raptor search, chain summoning the lady onto the field here. All right. Yes, there is a dog battle in the background, Pokemon battle. Now, you could target a level, other level four lower dino on the field, destroy it, then special summon a dino from your graveyard. So this could destroy the token, protect the token to then pop a baby from the deck, but we need a dinosaur to summon from the grave to even activate the Ovi Raptor effect. And we are negated by Imperm anyway. So we could take it out by battle. By battle, trigger the field spell, pop a baby, damage step, summon a dino, but we know that's what their intent is, so we're gonna stop it with our big welcome. Chaining the lady to the big welcome here. We didn't have anything chainable to stop that lady from setting up a welcome labyrinth from the deck. Come forth, lovely labyrinth. Get rid of the token. 
trigger the lovely pop a card on the field or in the hand. That will trigger the Meteoris, which is a main phase two Baron to floor. Could we have used the Wave Bridge? Yes. Wave Bridge stop Baron to floor. All right. Baron is here. Baron get popping, taking out the Welcome Labyrinth, ending our turn. Now, why didn't we use the Double Evolution Pill? It's banish a dino plus a non-dino from hand or grave. We don't have a non-dino. No non-dino in sight. Read Waybridge again. It's more than you. You're right. Uh, this card just... I hate this. I don't think this card's good. But, uh, you know, I didn't get top four with it. Haas did. And uh, I, I still believe in Haas. My early impression is this card sucks. It's got to be two more monsters than you. Big welcome on to the Baron. Now, by using it in the draw phase, you do give them the opportunity in the standby phase to get rid of their Baron to floor for something better in the graveyard. Not too big of a deal here, I think. Maybe we're going to summon Ovi Raptor, but it will it actually impact the game? As I said, hopping off the field, Ovi Raptor is here. So the better play would be wait for main phase, do the same play. They then don't summon Ovi Raptor. They then don't trigger the field spell. All right, uh, but I don't, I don't think it's going to do anything. This like, we're totally fine. Labyrinth is in a great spot. Everything into attack. Wiping out the OV Raptor, poking directly for 2,500, recycling a normal trap from the graveyard. We got double 80, and the pill is still not activatable. We can't use the pill. Welcome, chain lady, to the welcome to set a normal trap from the deck that's not activatable, unless... We summon an Ariana or a Clock. Ariana, grab a Clock or big welcome here. So we're not trying to use a newly set trap here. OV Raptor into the skill drain, negating the OV Raptor play. Skill drain is limited to one. Y yeah, it is. Protecting the token by attacking it with the field spell. Summoning a Pancratops, which is an out to the skill drain. Yup, yup. Tribute, pop, skill drain, outed. Just like that. Very well done. Now, we could pop the token, reborn the OV Raptor, trigger the field spell to summon a new token, exceeding into a Baguska. I wish I could be excited, but, uh, you know, if we could uh, big welcome, get big welcome in the grave, it just spins it back. I guess it's going to take a little bit before we out it, at least. Do we have any good generic links to deal with it? The link is gonna be reduced by the field spell. Phoenix. Phoenix pop, field spell, Baguska go back up to 2000 defense. But that was a good way to get it in the grave. So we didn't have to activate the big welcome. We just got it into the grave. We now spin it back. We then put everything into attack. And just like that, wipe out a card from the hand, lethal damage with a nightmare Phoenix. Very well done. Yeah, uh, I thought we'd have to wait at least another turn before being able to use the big welcome because we can only use one effect and only once that turn. Thus, you can't activate its on-field effect and then activate the graveyard effect, but discard with the Cerberus or the Phoenix and you're good. That is putting Labyrinth into the grand finale. Full Royal Labyrinth. I'm still on the fence with the Waybridge, so I hope to see it do well in the grand finale. We have in the top four with Labyrinth waiting in the grand finale, Branded versus Super Heavy Samurai, Maxi, Gamma, Nibiru. Surely we're going to keep Branded in check with three great hand traps. Let's find out. Starting off with the Branded and High Spirits to search our deck for an Albaz monster, grabbing the kit. Kit could search for our Branded Fusion. Gamma could negate. I don't think so, mate. Can't use called by on the Gamma because it's not being sent to the grave. Summon, summon, wipe it out. Now, what do we do here? You summon the side dra driver with the Gamma, so the Gangrenol is going to be triggered, so we're going to chain the Max C to you summoning a monster from the deck or extra deck with the Gangrenol, which will be the Quem. Quem will then send from the deck to the graveyard a Branded Fusion. Well, it's like, why would he do that? Why? There's no retribution, but... Fusion Duplication can copy the Branded Fusion, and it's also not ashable. You can't ash the Fusion Duplication 
copying the branded fusion. Add back Cartesia during the end phase. Let's get to it. Right away in the draw phase, Ghost Bell off the top of the deck. No way. The effect is to banish the branded fusion. So you can't ash it, but you can Ghost Bell it. What the hell is that? But, you know, we have called by. Just when you thought you got them, you don't. Negate, finger the bell, you're out. So what can we do off of this now? We have a dark monster in the graveyard, we have kit, so let's see what we do. When you want a branded fusion during the opponent's turn, we're gonna be sending a tragedy to make a Lubellion. Tragedy will activate, we'll chain link block the Lubellion from uh, Ghost Bell. Not that you could really do another one. We're gonna be protecting the Quem from the Ghost Bell, that is. So the Quem protect Lubellion and the Tragedy protect the Quem. Chain link blocking from, you know, also a Gamma. Gamma protection if they were to play another Cyframe Driver, which no one really does. Kit is being reborn, which will be triggering after this Chain Link Resolution, making our Mirror Jade. Kit's gonna be grabbing back the Banished Branded Fusion. That's right, Banished, or in Grave, or in the deck. And I uh, guess we don't even have a play. We're going to be losing our Stealthy during the end phase, that is. Which is going to grab a Call by the Grave from the opponent's graveyard before getting banished by the Mirror Jade. Thus, our Drone Lockbird gets banished instead. Cartesia, but we can't use the Call by the Grave yet. We're in High Spirits, recycle itself and the Grave back to our hand. Albion grab a Branded in White. Let's get to it. Everything in attack position, 6,200 damage on the field. Surely we're not playing into a Nibiru as we make an untargetable Sanctifier Dragon, putting this at over 9,000 damage per game. We know it's a called by. There's no secrets besides the hand. Just like that, taking this into a game two. Now, one of the biggest downsides to Branded is that they are usually a large deck with a lower chance to open up Maxi and Droll. So Super Heavy Samurai, in theory, should be winning the majority of the games they go first, as they're gonna do their full combo uninterrupted, which Branded's not gonna be able to break. Starting off with Kashi, as I said, no hand trap in sight, but we do have Super Poly. Can't activate in the grave. Omni negate, Omni negate, Omni negate, Monster negate, five disruptions plus the Veiler in Droll and Lockbird. Let's go. I think we're scooping this up. Can Super Poly even be used on this field? Water, Earth, Dark, Earth, 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 Wind. Let's go. Now it's gone. Did we have Garura? No Garura? Where's your Garura? Two monsters, same type and attribute, but different names. Oh, they're not same type. Uh, that's Moo Dragon. Yeah, uh, Machine and Psychic. We don't have Moo Dragon. No Moo Dragon. Yep, 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 yep. We don't have room for that. Borload Savage Dragon negating the activation of the Nadir Servant. If we had another copy, it would be activatable. Quem going to be negated and destroyed, chaining Super Poly to fuse what? We are fusing the Quem and the Borlo to be making a Coritis, which could reduce the entire field to zero attack. Come forth, Gamma and Cyframe Driver, everything into attack position against a monster that could reduce everything to zero. First, take out the Dweller. Nothing in our grave can even activate, not even the Retribution. We have the Banishment. Banishment will be reborning a Despia or level eight or higher fusion. Quem can reborn an Albaz or a monster that mentions it from the graveyard. So that's the difference between the Banishment and the Quem. We have Therion Regulus back onto the field here. Scales on summon reborn a Piercer from the grave. We are now going to use the Banky to search for the Soul Horns, which could give a monster the ability to double attack or is an extender for link summoning. 
big link it up into an Apollo say with the Quadra monster negate searching for a wagon as we already used up our normal summon but we did not pendulum summon yet we could summon our uh, a lot of cards Coritis is going to attempt to reduce the field to zero attack. We're going to be using the Apollo USA chain banishment, which could get negated by the Regulus. The newly summoned monster could then be negated by the Apollo since it's not on the same chain. Let's go to game number three. Didi Crow, which we keep on saying it. Players are playing into Didi Crow stopping their main play by sending the Albaz, making an Albion, and they have to banish that Albaz. So are we finally going to see the Didi Crow come into play? We have Ghost Spell, which could negate the Lubellion Fusion if it's not chain link blocked. We got Gamma. Gamma negate any monster effect. Triple Hand Trap. Let's see how this goes. Draw phase opening. Discard Maximus into our Alubur. That's going to be our first negate among three Hand Traps total. Negate and destroy the Alubur. Branded is still a good deck without Branded Fusion. I don't see Branded Fusion. I see a really good deck. Serenir activating Ascend from the deck here, and we are going to be DD Crow banishing the Albaz. Is that the correct play? It does stop the Albion, so in response to it, as we've been saying, a lot of people playing right into the DD Crow as we see here. Albion still forced to fuse. We have Retribution, which will recycle a card in the graveyard back to our hand, using the Mercurior and Alibur for Coritis. So the Mercurior was stopped from being banished by the Ghost Bell, but we still banished it with the Albion. Mercurior searching for an Albion. Albion send branded fusion. <laughs> you used everything to stop branded, and they still have branded fusion in their hand. Send branded fusion. Add Branded Fusion, draw on a duplication, sure, why not? So not only are we going to Branded Fusion, but we're going to do it again on your turn. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. DD Crow, Ghost Bell, Gamma. We don't care. We don't care. Lost. Search of Mercoria for a monster negate. Mirror Jade, non-target monster banished. Quem, reborn, Coritis from the grave. And yeah, drawing duplication is nuts. It's a one of. Why is it a one of if it's so good? Because Thrust could set it. Albion setting up a banishment during the end phase, and good luck. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know how we could win this. Mercurior negate the search. We're just gonna just negate everything you do. You summon, we're gonna banish. You search, we're going to negate. You try to do anything, we're gonna stop you. Banish. Yep, right away. And if we have a card in our hand, we could discard with the Albaz to fuse with your field. Ben Kia has a pendulum scale. What does it do? Nothing if you don't have a Super Heavy Sam right on the field to search your card. You can't search unless you have a Super Heavy Sam. Just like that, it's over. Branded, playing through three hand traps and then adding the Branded Fusion on top of the three hand traps, all three being activated. Winning the duel. Pushing itself into the grand finale. Branded, what the freaking hell was that? All right, into the grand finale we go. What do we have here? We have triple dogmatic of punishment. You could only activate one per turn. We have double Nadir Servant. Again, only one per turn can be activated. But beyond that, we have a pretty good turn one with the Ariana and Big Welcome Labyrinth. And of course, Hostrachin ensuring that every card in their deck is royal rarity. Begin. Ariana searching our deck for a Labyrinth card. So we have the welcome plus big welcome set for combo back to you. What are we doing here? Within the main phase, we are going to be special summoning our Alibur. It's okay to not use this in the draw phase if you have something like a triple tactics talent where you're going to want them to use their hand trap in the main phase one so that you get to then draw two or look at their hand or take control. We're gonna be using the Welcome Labyrinth in response to the Alibur searching. Summoning from the deck, what? Well, we're now getting max seed. So this is an opportunity to chain big welcome to the maxi so they draw one less card or we can get really greedy if we want to get greedy we could 
wait for the lady, then activate the big welcome chain to the lady and set up some crazy wombo combo with the Eradicator virus, which will be usable that turn if we want. So let's see what we do. We're gonna chain the big welcome. So with the big welcome, we're gonna be summoning from the deck here, a lovely labyrinth. We're not gonna be setting up to eradicate the entire hand. Come forth, lady, you do get that one draw as the lovely will now be randomly popping. Get pop, what? Did we randomly pop from the hand? Ain't no way. This literally can't happen in the TCG. The best card in your hand, you just hold on to it with your thumb extra hard and then let another card fall out. TTT, draw two activated, come to me. Fusion deploy, reveal an Albion, summon the Albaz, get ready to fuse now. You have to use the Albaz for the fusion summon, so the Dogmatica punishment punishing the Albaz stops the fusion summon. Perfect. Wipe out the Albaz, chaining Lady to the Dogmatica punishment. I mean, we could draw a card instead of popping the Alibur. It depends on what we want to send. Well, wait, Guru's 1500, so, uh, wait. We're sending the Tri-Brigade Arms to send Garura. Okay, correction, you, we still Garura here, but we're not Entissing. Draw a card off Garura. Nadir Servant, send our own I mean, Garura, both uh, back to back. Okay, we both drawn off Garura. We have Thrust, thrusting a Harpy Feather Duster into our hand on the activation. We are going to not have to be activating anything, but Dimensional Barrier being in the graveyard, Lovely will be able to recycle it. Maximus banishing the Garuma, the Garura that is. Maximus then sending a Titan clad in Albion. That's gonna trigger our own Entis and the Wind Pegasus, which will come into play later. If a card you control is destroyed by an opponent's card effect while this is in the field or graveyard, you could banish this card, target one card your opponent controls, shuffle it back in the deck. So do be ready. Summoning the Quem, Quem send from the deck to the great Quem for Quem, okay. Albion setting up into the back row a branded banishment. So the Quem could reborn an Albaz monster. The Banishment could reborn a Despia or a Fusion. We're gonna chain Lady to the Banishment, attempting to reborn a Quem to then activate the Send from the deck to the graveyard. So do get ready for that in Albaz card. Using with the Lovely and the Alibur to make a Quiritus. Now, where did Lovely go? Banished, because she's banished. We can't interact with her no more. The big welcome can only reborn her from the graveyard. If you only play one lovely, this is devastating as we were reliant on recycling the dimensional barrier. All we had to do was make it to main phase one to activate then reset it onto the field. But we draw phased that banishment to banish the lovely. That's huge. That is huge. Was there anything we could do? Could overroot uh, do something? Target a card your opponent controls and one card in their graveyard. Oh my gosh. We are reborning Albaz with the Quem. Discard Diffuse with the Lady. Chain the Big Welcome, spin back our Lady. You could also spin back the Albaz to stop the fusion. No fusion summon for you. Welcome being triggered because a monster left the field through a trap effect. Lava Golem, then summon our Lady back into the field, but we cannot normal summon our Ariana. Retribution, recycling the branded fusion. It's like hard to see your back rows because they're like shining while face down. Trap Trick could set a trap from the deck by banishing a copy of it from the deck, and it's activatable that turn. We could send a card in the field to the graveyard. We could pop a card plus pop another card if we have another Entis. And we have Welcome Labyrinth, summon a Labyrinth from the deck, and only from the deck. Right. Is there a card in the extra deck that you could use with the Dogmatica Punishment to recycle your Banished Lovely back in the deck? I don't know if there is one. Welcome Labyrinth being met with a Max C drop per special summon, which this would be pretty much our only special summon. Double Lady, both ladies are indestructible by card effect and cannot be targeted. Special summoning our Cartesia, Branded Fusing, sending a Lubellion and Albas from the deck to the graveyard to make our Albion. Albion is going to on summon activate Diffuse using our hand fields, our grave banishing the Albaz and Quiritus to make a Mirror Jade. Tributing for the Lubellion to set up a Branded Spell Trap from the deck. 
Over Root is going to send Lubellion before setting up a back row card. Now, does the Over Root have to send in order to set the card in the field? We're going to find out right here, or we could read the card. Over Root states, if you do, only if you send the card in the field to the grave do you reborn the other card from the grave, so that's not going to happen. Gangrenolon summoned, sending an Albion from the deck to the grave, everything into attack position. Branded Sword adding a banished Albaz card back to our hand. We have not used up our normal summon yet. Mirror Jade with a non-target monster banished to banish the untargetable lady. Quem being triggered to reborn an Albion Shrouded Dragon from the grave. Trap Trick, I, what? What do we do here? We have 14,000 damage. We're grabbing any trap we want from the deck and it will be activatable the turn it's set right here, right now. What's it gonna be? Super Polly. Chain Link blocking the lady from setting a trap from our deck onto the field. Okay, sure. Way, Waybridge, Waybridge, Waybridge. Are we gonna be Waybridge believers now? We are Waybridging, ain't no way. If your opponent controls two or more monsters than you do, which I control none because you just super polyed my only monster, you have to send every card you control to the graveyard until you have just one. Let's go, it's activatable. We'll wait for the fuse. This can't stop anything. Borlo, that's ain't that. Nope, that ain't stopping. Ain't stopping. Way bridge. We're going to be using the Borlo to pop a monster before it's sent to the graveyard to take out the Dogmatica Punishment, and we're going to lose everything but one. But the Borlo, Borlo Furious stays. You popped my back row while I have a Pegasus in the grave. I knew that this would come into play, and it would be random. We would forget about it. I did not forget. Shuffle that Borlo back into the deck. Blazing Cartesia during the end phase, add back to the hand. Brain and High Spirits, add back to be recycled. Albion, searching our deck for a branded in white. Abbo's thinking, hey, I'm fine. You know, I'm gonna have another turn. Labyrinth is not known for one turn killing. Grabbing a big welcome. What do we have in the graveyard here? Anything that's triggerable off of the big welcome. We have Welcome Labyrinth to reset. Where's our furniture? Wait, is Haas not playing the furniture? I think we are not playing the furniture because they are not super rare or higher. Thus, you cannot royal rarity the furniture. Thus, for that reason alone, we're not playing it. Branded in white, banishing from the graveyard the Quem and the Albaz for an untargetable Albion Sanctifier Dragon. Cartesia is now here. Big welcome. In response to that, we're going to be banishing a lady from the graveyard. You know, whoa, that's our second lady. Are we out of ladies? You play three ladies, right? Third lady, return back to Ariana, triggering the Welcome Labyrinth to set itself back onto the field. Now, Welcome can only summon from the deck, not from the grave or hand. We're going to be tributing to summon our Lubellion, triggering the Serenir to send a loss from the deck to the graveyard, using Lubellion to set up a Branded Beast which during the end phase will be able to grab the branded uh, lost onto the field, right? That's what this one does. Grab a branded continuous in the graveyard. First, we're gonna use the branded beast to tribute our Lubellion to pop a card in the field, taking out the welcome labyrinth. End phase, set up the lost, which could be triggered off of the Cartesia to search for a Mercurior for a monster negate. We can also use the Albion Sanctifier to summon an Albaz from our graveyard. I'm sure we have one. Do we, wait, we don't have one, huh? Okay. Ariana on summon, searching for our big welcome labyrinth, using the big welcome to target any card in the field except the Albion Sanctifier as it is untargetable. We did not chain Cartesia Fuse with our Albion Sanctifier. Welcome Labyrinth resetting itself onto the field. Within the battle phase, we are going to be reborning our own Mirror Jade onto our field, but the Gozen match is going to disallow that play. You can only control a light monster on the field, and Mirror Jade is dark, thus stopping the non-target monster banish. Gozen coming in hot. It, that completely stops it. <laughs> nope. All right. We have our Labyrinth Labyrinth, which will be non-target destroy the Sanctifier, unless we have an opening in the graveyard to protect it from destruction, which we do. We actually do. Ash is going to negate the big welcome from summoning a monster and using the field spell to pop the Sanctifier. Our Branded Beast is quite dead. We need a bestial monster on the field in order to tribute our monsters to pop cards in the fields. 
We are going to end phase, play by the rules of goes and match, summoning a light onto our field, a dark onto yours. This is not a fusion summon, so it does not get triggered. To battle we go, Lubalian take out Albion, suiciding the Sanctifier with the Lady, and the Welcome can't reborn it. We're out of ladies, and are we out of big welcomes also? Big welcome gone, big welcome gone, third big welcome in the graveyard. How do you reborn the lady? Well, Labyrinth Labyrinth. If we activate impermanence, that will trigger the Labyrinth Labyrinth to reborn the lady. So we still have a way. Okay. Wait, we added green and red, we didn't set it. We're not low on time, right? We good? Setting an eradicator. Turn 12. Normal summoning our Cartesia. We are going to imperm the Cartesia to trigger the Labyrinth Labyrinth to reborn the Lady. The play I stated earlier. Do we put the Lubellion into defense? Well, you can't after declaring an attack, so it's stuck in attack. At 3000 D, we could have been protected from the Lady. We're still not taking it out. We're going right for that Cartesia. Despite goes and match pretty much keeping it in place. Now we get to protect ourselves here. Big welcome, our final big welcome, spinning the Lubalian off of the field. It is Lady Beatdown time, untargetable, indestructible, Eradicator Epidemic Virus declaring spell. As we call by the grave, banish your lady from being summoned through the effect of the Labyrinth Labyrinth to then attack for game. Solemn judgment, negate the called by the grave, reborning the lady, wiping out the field in hand and then attacking for game. Right? Wait, you, you, uh, huh? Why? No? Huh? Do we have another? We still have game without that lady. We have something else. We could wait. Wiping out the spells, triggering the labyrinth labyrinth to attack for game, holding on to the solemn judgment, attacking for game with solemn. We can't negate that with solemn. Oh my gosh. We good? We good? We can't stop that. Blocking the final attack. 900 life points left. Serenir sending from the decks of the graveyard a Branded in High Spirits. Got Imperm. Branded Beast setting up the Destroyed by Eradicator. Branded lost. Goodbye to Fusion Deployment due to the Eradicator. Ending the turn. No play whatsoever. Absolutely out of juice. Both players burn for 1k, attack for game. Oh my Jesus. What the heck was that duel? That was absolute insanity. Abamod knowing that Haas is playing way bridge is going to have to change up their plays. That's what I'm thinking. Adding our branded fusion with the Alibur, branded fusing, sending, or the Albion play. This makes you susceptible to a DD Crow or Bistial. The Mirror Jade is not going to be able to be used. It already used its effect, but we have the Branded Beast only within the main phase. We could pop any card on the field by tributing the Lubellion. We have the Retribution, which could negate a special summon. We have Branded in Red, which could s grab from the graveyard, then summon a Chimera to wipe out even more back row cards. So we could pop a back row, then pop two more back rows. And then we have Branded Banishment, which could reborn from the graveyard, a Despia or level eight or higher, and then fuse with either side of the field. This is gonna be wild. Ah, uh, you trying to bait me? We uh, end the main phase? No, battle phase? I don't care. Okay, I don't have evenly. You're ending main phase too? <laughs> I mean, it's all public knowledge, right? We know you have Brandon Red, which is Chimera Pop 2. We know you have Branded Beast, which is Pop 1. So we do nothing? No, no, no. Oh, wait, wait. It bugged out. It, it said, it said end. But that was the end of the battle phase, but it said main phase two. That was a bug. That was a bug. Not on me. That was a bug. Now we're going to Brandon Beast pop the Gozen. And, uh, okay, we're not going for the Brandon Red play because... Wait, we had Tragedy. We're not... It's not worth it to YOLO? Okay. Tragedy is going to be banished to recycle the Branded Fusion instead of being used for with the Brandon Red to banish it. 
Sending from the deck Albaz and Cartesia to make an untargetable Sanctifier Dragon. And uh, it's worth noting that we randomly 25% chance to hit the Floodgate. Goes and match out of all four cards set. 25% and we hit the one correct card. How? Anyway. Albion being reborn through the effect of Quem being sent to the graveyard for our Lubelian, which will be setting up a branded spell trap card into our back or our branded lost. The battle we go with 10,000 damage. <laughs> Ain't no way. Yes way. When it comes to way bridge, your opponent has to send every monster they control to the graveyard until they only control one. Mirror Jade for 3k to the face here. Albion with no room to set into the back row. We're going to be chaining our lady to come forth and summon. And I do expect a big welcome and or trap trick play, if not both, to be activated here. That is what we were waiting for. Retribution to negate the big welcome labyrinth. We may not have Ash Blossom, but we're going to negate it through another way. Trap trick though, what are we doing? Trap trick. Chain Lady to the Trap Trick. No. Chain Link block the Lady by banishing the Lady off the field. You're not getting a free trap here. Now, what are we grabbing with the Trap Trick? A Welcome Labyrinth, which we could activate right here, right now. Welcome Labyrinth, our Arianna onto the field here as it activates to grab a Labyrinth card, being our big welcome. We have one big welcome in the grave so far. Quem is being summoned from the deck through the effect of the Titan Clad, which is going to be sending the Branded in High Spirits, which will be recycling itself in the Graveyard back to the hand, and the Cartesia also being added back. Now, the Mirror Jade already activated, but we have Mercurial Monster Negate. We have Branded in Red to fuse into something like a Chimera. If the Mirror Jade goes to the Graveyard, we can reborn it with a Quem. We also have Banishment to fuse with either side of the field. And let's go. The Branded Beast is no good at the moment. Ariana, take out the Quen. Big enough, barely at 1600 attack. Big welcome spinning back our own Ariana. I don't think so. I think we're going to try to fuse with your Ariana. Huh? Using the Albion and the Ariana, uh, Mirror Jade and Ariana into a Drago Stapelia. Okay. <laughs> That's uh, fine. As the Branded Loss triggers to grab an Albion from our deck to our hand. So we wanted to re-summon the Ariana to get her effect twice. Now with the Lovely in our hand, with no other monster in the field to use with our big welcome, we're not going to be able to summon her and then pop a card in the field. We are setting up the impermanence into the same column as the Branded Beast, despite there not being a Bestial on the field, but the Sanctifier could help you meet the requirement of the Branded Beast by summoning a Bestial onto your side of the field. We're going to be sending a Brandon High Spirits from the hands of the grave to ensure it gets special summoned for beatdown mode, then send it to the graveyard for our Lubelian. Branded in white, using the graveyard, banishing an Albaz and Titan Clad to summon a Borlode Furious Dragon. We are now in a window where the opponent cannot activate Imperm, cannot activate the Big Welcome, and if we toggle on, we could use the Borlode Furious to pop one of the back row cards and they will not be able to respond. Yep, yep, yep. We don't even need toggle on. Oh my god. We lose everything. They can't chain. They could not chain. No chain. Both back row gone. Can't imperm. Can't big welcome. Branded Lost is protecting you from being responded to by any card effects as long as your fusion summon was on chain link one, which it was a normal spell, so it should have been. Lethal damage. Very nicely done. Take advantage of the branded lost window. Make big plays. Toggle on if it's not activating. Otherwise, if it's activating, you could be on toggle auto. You could chain to it, so that's okay. But if nothing's being triggered, you do want to toggle on within that window of your monster being summoned on chain link one to activate Mirror Jade, activate Borload, activate some other cards. Tier, yeah, you know, tier is up there. Activate the Lord of Heavenly Prison. Now our back row cannot be destroyed by cards like Branded Beast or Chimera. Had we had this in game two, it probably would have been a much different duel. So this is a big deal. And we are playing Lord of Heavenly Prison over the furniture cards. No furniture, we're playing Waybridge and Lord instead. Valiant discard itself to grab the Serenir. Brandon High Spirits is a way to get the Maximus into the graveyard to search your deck for an Albaz monster, being the Albion. 
Albion's gonna send from the deck to the graveyard a Retribution. Serenir, if tributed or sent to the graveyard in any way, is going to be getting the Branded Fusion in the grave to add to our hand with the Retribution. So you could fuse with it, or ideally, you send it to the graveyard with your Lubellion. Now, we're gonna get our Branded Fusion. Lubellion's setting up a Branded Loss, which we have to do something. Because as soon as that Branded Fusion resolves, there's gonna be a large chain of multiple different summons where we can't use anything. We can't Big Welcome, we can't Way Bridge, we're gonna have to be desperately waiting, waiting for an open game state and a priority pass to us in order to activate anything. Branded Fusion, and that's it. We're locked out. We're locked out. Nothing can be activated. Can't chain to this. Putting the Albion on Chainlink 1 to further push the window of unrespondability. Banishing from the grave, come forth into Lubellion. Can't respond to Lebellion. Discard, fuse. Summoning a Mirror Jade. We can't respond to the summon, but now we can. Now we're good. So nothing uh, too crazy came from that. Way Bridge sending everything but Mirror Jade. I don't know. Are, are you all a Way Bridge believer or what by now? I, I, I'm, I don't know. Maybe I'm a believer. Used to a trap trick. This is something. Nadir Servant locking herself out of the extra deck by sending a Titan Clad from the extra deck to the grave to summon a Quem during the end phase. We also have Kit Special Summoning because we have an Albaz Fusion in the grave. Returning our Banished Retribution back to our hand. Now we have the way to negate the Big Welcome Labyrinth. Albi oh, but we are going to be activating it before it could get negated, adding Ariana back to our hand, triggering the Lord of Heavenly Prison to summon itself onto the fields. We have not resolved the Titan Clad yet, I believe. We did not. So Albion setting a banishment, and we are now using the effect of Gangrenol in response to the Lord to summon from the deck a Quem. Quem send from the deck to the grave a branded sword. Now we have Titan clad summoning an Albaz. Now what is good here? Retribution will be able to negate a special summon. We have banishment reborning from the grave. The what do we uh we, we didn't target yet? So let's see what we target. Target the Albion to summon and fuse with either side of the field. This could be a Dragos Tepelia. And we have the Branded Loss, which will grab a Mercurial, which will be a monster negate. So let's go. Come for Albion. We want to use that Pot of E. Draw two. Lubellion into Borlord, pop the Pot of E. <laughs> Is that what we're doing? Are we going to pop the Pot of E before we could activate it? I'd love to see it. Grab that Mercurial, as I said. That is double Dark Dragon for the Bora Load with the Toggle on in the draw phase to pop the Pot of E before it can be activated to draw two. No Pot of Greed for you. Ariana getting negated for, by the search for Mercurier, turning off the ability to Lava Golem. There's a confliction here. We cannot Lava Golem. Lord Heavenly Prison revealing itself. Taking out the Quem, uh, you know, I was thinking maybe it was an option to just kill the Ariana and then use the Way Bridge with no monsters on the field. Or, uh, no, actually it doesn't matter. It, you're not trying to equalize the field, it's simply an activation requirement to have two or more monsters than you do, then it does the same thing no matter what. Okay, correction. Grab the Cartesia and the Brandon High Spirits during the end phase. Let's go, let's go. The Retribution could negate the Lord Heavenly Prison, attempting to be summoned after the Way Bridge. Summoning our Lubellion, setting up the Branded Beast, not activating it, activating the Way Bridge right here, right now, sending everything on the field to the grave except one. As the Big Welcome returns back to Ariana, or at least attempts to do so, as the Mirror Jade then chain banishes the Ariana off the field. We still have Lord Heavenly Prison being triggered off of the Way Bridge resolution. Send it all, but the Borload Furious, which has already activated its effect. But as we said, the Branded Retribution, which could also be used for a big Welcome Labyrinth, being used instead to negate the Lord of Heavenly Prison and destroy. 3k to the face. Do we have anything here that we could have done? The Branded Red, if we fuse off of that, the monster cannot attack directly. Okay, Branded is balanced. They did put a lot of thought into putting some proper restrictions in. Lady, but not summonable. Give them a Lava Golem at 8,000 life. 
Retribution Recycling, no other card except the Branded Fusion, of course. Uh, it's, this card's limited to one, so you can only use it once, and if it gets negated, it's just gone forever. That's how we balance Branded, uh, Konami said probably. Shokan into Sanctifier. 6,000 damage on the field, lethal damage, back-to-back -back Branded winning the Meta Weekly. Nothing can stop it. Damn. All right.